When you've been flying FPV as long as I have, it's easy to get into a rut where you kind of do the same things over and over again. And one of the best ways I've found to break yourself out of that rut is to find somebody who does things completely different than you and then just try and copy them. And that's what we're doing in this video series. 30 days of Spang! I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're gonna... You might learn something today. Mostly I'm gonna learn something today. Hopefully. Spang is an energetic and precise style of FPV that has always impressed and a little bit intimidated me. And that's why I've picked it for this video series, just to really get me out of my box. Uh, and today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at one of the best Spang pilots. Some people actually tell me he's the best. I'm not going to weigh in on that. But uh, we're going to look at Marius FPV. We're going to pick a move or a sequence of moves that he's done and we're going to try and emulate them. And later in the video, I'm going to ad address a criticism that I got when I tried to do this with one of Farouk FPV's tricks uh, in the previous video, They're saying that that's not how to learn. I disagree. I'll tell you why a little later. Well, let's get in the air. Going by so fast. So it's... He's rolling right, it's a long sort of arcing, and then there's a way that he turns where he doesn't just roll, but he kind of swoops like that, swoops around. So the quad continues moving to the side as he comes over. He then pitches back and then continues yaw left. So there's this continual track this arc that it, the quad moves through. So roll right, swoop over flip, and then continue flat yaw spin to the left. That's what we're gonna try this time. We're gonna see how spangy we can make it look. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna come around in a turn, then we're not gonna just flip over, but we're gonna continue the sort of swoosh around, so we're turning, and then we split ass basically, and stop almost as if we were setting up a rewind, except he did it faster. He didn't really split S, he just kind of flip-flopped into it. So I can't gain speed then, I can't gain altitude when I do the swoosh, I have to kind of make it one move. And then he continued with a flat yaw spin to the same direction. It's going to look like crap right now, but we're going to keep working it and hopefully we'll get it looking nice. So he comes around. you got to keep moving forward though. So part of my problem is I am stopping on the split S. It is not actually like a rewind. We are not going to go... Wow. I think all of these... <laughs> I had the throttle a little raised there. I think all these spang moves are better with a higher idle throttle. Okay, so I changed direction, but that was kind of the, that was the gist of the move in a way. So we're coming through here. And we stop. We want to keep the throttle. Oh, interesting. So here's something I just think I think I figured out is if you keep the throttle up as you go through the roll, if I drop here, I pop up higher and I float. But if I keep the throttle up, it keeps me closer to the ground because while I'm inverted, I'm pulling myself down. And the other, th oh, yeah. So if I, okay, that wasn't great, but the other thing is I want to keep the throttle up because I want to keep pulling myself through the move. So I am not doing a split S like that or a, a roll, but rather a, a spiral where I continue to maintain my forward position, my forward momentum, so that as I come out of it and do the flat yaw spin, I will still be moving the same direction. That's the thing, uh, one of the things I, I, I like about Spang is they'll do these moves and they'll keep going they'll maintain their line while doing these crazy moves. And I think it's one of the most impressive things about the style. This is something I noticed before. I left the throttle up during a move. I think it was just a roll. And I thought the stops were sharper. It makes sense. The motors have less torque at zero throttle 
uh, at low RPM so they can not change speed as quickly and in order to make sharp stops the motors have to change speed quickly. It's easy to think that a quadcopter this powerful can have as much responsiveness as you could possibly want but that's not true. It has plenty of power to go in a straight line really really fast but to actually accelerate or decelerate the motors abruptly for especially from very low RPM is challenging. So by leaving the throttle just a little bit up, it makes sense that you would have sharper stops. You might even try raising the idle speed of the motors, although that would have other effects that you might not like. What's different about the feel then? Leaving the throttle up. I don't know. Maybe it's that you keep moving forward in a way you don't? If I drop throttle, Oh, maybe it's that your altitude doesn't change in the same way. If I drop throttle, then I'm falling when the, when the move is over. If I leave throttle up, I'm still moving forward. And isn't that something that Spang is all about, which is moving forward? Okay, so here we go. We'll go. No, I, well, I forgot the move. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, that feels okay. Here we go. We'll go. Not very flat, and I gained altitude. It's better if I do it close to the ground. But I do feel kind of good about that move. That feels kind of spangy to me. I don't know why. No, that was not spangy. See, there's a big throttle pump and a gained altitude, and it became a separation instead of a flow. Trying not to crash. Okay, I'm doing two turns instead of one just because I like to try to get it flat. And do it the other way. Oh! I may have just gone through that. I don't know. Interesting. Okay. There's a wiggliness to it, isn't there? There's kind of like, you're not just going to go straight and then go like that, but instead you're going to go wiggly wiggle. I don't know. So, okay, now let's try to bring some proximity into it and not just do it out in the field. I don't think pops like that. I don't think pops like that and floats are very spangy. I don't think so. So we'll come around here and we'll do a, uh, we'll get in here. Okay, okay, okay. We'll come around here, we'll get on the driveway and we will, no. I don't wanna come all the way over. We're gonna kinda of come this way. Not so much altitude though, keep it close to the ground. Not that close. We'll pitch forward there to keep the motion going. We'll come around here. That was, uh... You need to reverse the direction though. Reverse the direction. So you're not keeping the yaw in, you're following the line. There's this arc this way, and you're following that arc. Bit. I think I feel it a tiny bit. 
There's that wiggle. There it was. There's like a... Is it yaw? Is it on the yaw axis? If I come in here, where, where's that wiggle coming from? It's the yaw axis. That's it. If I come in here, that's it. It's not just roll. It's not coordinated. If I coordinate the pitch and roll and yaw, I'm just sort of doing a, a smooth turn and flying through the move. But the little wiggle that makes it look good is there's a little extra yaw, a little extra that lets you snap it around, isn't there? I think so. Uh-huh. It like just whips it a little bit. So here's without the extra yaw. See, that's just like a little split S or an entry to a rewind. But with the extra yaw, it turns the nose in and it, oh, did you see that? That's, uh, that's interesting. So here we're gonna kind of, another thing I've noticed the Spang pilots will do is they will kind of hold an angle through a long arc to the point where, do you see that I let the nose drift to the outside a little bit? So I've seen them do that. It's kind of like an eject where they'll hold and then they'll, they'll set an angle and now like this, I'm really not very coordinated. But then I can fix that, can I, by wiggling that inward with yaw. So watch. So here, we'll come through here, we'll hold this and then, oh wow, okay, did that on purpose completely. That's really interesting. Hold on, I gotta scratch my nose. So how could I do this? Instead of coming straight and then going Instead of coming straight and then coming over, I could be kind of caught to the side like I've just done an eject, an eject. So here we are. We're caught. Oh. Interesting. Interesting. Always go back to those floats, though. And you gotta be super close to the ground to really make it look good. That's one of the things Marius does. Is, so let's get close to the ground. I'm climbing. I'm, 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 am I dropping the throttle still? I don't wanna climb. So if you're, not, if you're climbing, it means you're hitting the throttle too much. All right, obviously. Stay close to the ground, okay? Don't climb. Don't climb. Not that close. That's not good. That's, I'm looking at the ground through the whole thing. I need to get through that pitch faster so you can see the horizon sooner. Yeah. You can see, you need to, you want to see the horizon so you can see what's going on. Oh, I think I went through that. Cool. That was badass. I think I want to watch Marius do it again because it's been long enough since the beginning of the video that I may have lost little aspects of it that make it look the way that, like, it's supposed to look. And I think this is a good time to address the criticism that some people have of this, like, whole approach. There was somebody in one of the previous videos who said, Spang is just stick banging. You just got to get next to some trees and bang some sticks and you can't be trying to copy other people's moves. Marius didn't plan or, or Farouk didn't plan that sequence of moves. He just did it. You just need to do it. And there's truth to that. There's some truth to that, that in order for you to really express yourself with any creative uh, music, whatever, dance, any creative practice, you have to just sometimes stop copying each other, express yourself, and find your unique voice. But the first thing you do is you 
find people who are better than you and more experienced than you and you copy them because you can't learn how to dance the tango or the salsa or the waltz without watching other people who do it that way. You're not going to invent the waltz if you just get out there and you just do whatever kind of dance you feel like you want to do. A whole lot of people have put a whole lot of effort into developing this style. And here's the thing I think people are missing who criticize this approach. That the goal of this approach is not to emulate Spang necessarily. I mean it is a little bit because I think it looks cool and I'd like to be able to do it. But the goal is to expand your repertoire of things that you just know how to do so that when you cut loose and you're just creative and you're banging the sticks you have a larger vocabulary of things that can just come out spontaneously that wouldn't come out. There's a saying, uh, you don't rise to the occasion, you descend to the level of your training. Oh, my batteries are charged. You descend to the level of your training. And one thing that I think that means is that when you're trying to be creative under pressure with no plan, the things that you'll be most likely to do are the things that you are most comfortable with. And that means that is when you will be least expressive in some ways, unless you have developed a big vocabulary of things that you know how to do innately. And one of the best ways to think about if you're a if you're a hip hop dancer, but you also like have a lot of experience with tango and salsa, how much better of a hip hop dancer are you gonna be by working that stuff in? And the only way to do that is to watch other people who do it and to copy them, to copy them as closely as you can, but not just from the perspective of rote copying, but from the perspective of understanding why they're doing what they're doing and how they're doing what they're doing to increase your own skill base. Yes, he yaws in <gasps> and it's almost a sideways roll. He starts yawing. He starts yawing and then it's almost a sideways roll continuing the yaw with the pitch. It's not, it's not roll pitch. It is, I'm coming in, I turn almost sideways I roll like this and continue to yaw around and out. Interesting. And then, oh, and then you can see the horizon through the whole thing. See, if I just, if I'm looking down, I'm looking at the ground there, but if I turn sideways, Sort of. Huh. Okay. All right. Let's try some just flying. I'm so single axis a lot of the time. Go right through. Go, oh, can't get back through it. Oh, oh, I'm starting to feel like I want to get that. There's a rhythm to it where you're like, Pause and that's not a spanging move, that's a Joshua move. There's a way that they kind of fall off. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
Okay, 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 okay. I'm so glad I'm doing these videos. I'm making this video just for me. Uh, I hope I'm glad you guys are along for the ride. But there's just these little moments, like where I'm floating up on the tree, and I do that all the time where I'll just float over a tree, but it's always the same thing. I, the way that I'm thinking about where I'm going and what I'm going to do next is always the same. And it just completely changes when I'm think, trying to emulate that style. I float, and instead of continuing on the line and continuing through like a power loop, I'm like, okay, I'm hanging now. How am I going to get out of this? I'm going to back off and twist, and, and it starts to look different. And whether I end up looking like Farouk or Marius or just like having a good time for an hour and coming up with a new sort of variant on my own style. Who cares, right? But uh, I'm glad you're along for the ride. Uh, this is a playlist. This is, I think, number four in the playlist. The whole playlist is linked down below, and I will also put a card on screen. There it is, if you want to uh, check it out. Uh, I'm doing 30 days of this, and at the end, we'll see what I end up with. Happy flying.